9-11 happened, uh, you know, we're right there. And uh, so uh, we're down, uh, we're in the middle of a, um, a briefing and uh, Shaq's at the head of the table. Um, uh, Joe Snow, uh, he's the DO, he's sitting there. John Schmidt, uh, Deanna Violet. Um, uh, and then, uh, you know, the whole table's rounded out. And it was funny because <laughs> in the we lived in this World War II barracks yeah. and uh, there was a column on the side that I was sitting on and there was two columns, sorry. So you, you'd have chairs, chairs, column, chairs, chairs, column, chairs. So it would look like it, like an organ with people's heads going back and forth all the time. It was such a piece of junk building. I had oh, like a yeah. dead rat in my wall. It stank yeah. for years, you know. Anyway, uh, so, that's funny. Just not to get off the subject, but that defines tech peas at that era. Like everybody had that crappy building. Everybody lived, you know. Nobody had the good stuff. It was that's just the way our kind of our. our anyway yeah that yeah. that sounds sounds very familiar yeah yeah and funny uh you know I'll, I'll forget if i just go chronologically but after uh we deployed and and we started fighting the gwat fort drum got modernized rapidly they got so much money thrown at them except for us oh really <laughs> yeah <laughs> now they have a new building today and everything but yeah yeah it's a lot better now for sure yeah, yeah but back yeah. then it was like yeah, yeah. yeah. so uh um Shaq leaves the room and a couple minutes, we're all just sitting there. Snowman's going through the slides and it's just mundane stuff. And then uh, he comes back in and he goes, okay, we're all dismissed. And then um, I don't know if he told us there, if we called in a select few, but down in the flight room, they were watching it on TV. And yeah. uh, um, so I go down there and I was, you know, I, New Jersey, been in New York dozens and dozens of times in my life. And, uh, I said, there's no way that building's coming down. And yeah. um, just as I say that, there it goes, you know. And then I was just in such disbelief. And so was everybody else, just riveted. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So they locked us down. They Nobody's going home. You know, we're all locked down. And uh, it was pretty tense. We didn't know what we were going to do. And then later on, they, they let everybody go. And um, so uh, uh, then we start planning. And... Um, uh, it was interesting because you know what our first mission was. So, and so now I'm the guy, I'm, I'm the one who's going to go and, uh, we're planning a mission to take what was called the rainbow bridge. And that was between Uzbekistan and, uh, Afghanistan. So okay. it was supposed to secure the, uh, LOC. And so the 10th mount was that, that was their plan. So we're planning sessions, planning sessions. And then, um, uh, at this point, uh, this is a couple of weeks go by. We're still planning. Uh, L.A. General Longoria, uh, Colonel Longoria at the time, 18th ASOG commander, takes Shaq, uh, sends him to um, Uzbekistan to be the task force dagger ALO, in a mm -hmm. sense, you know, to run uh, the siege of Sodaf North uh, air ops. Um, okay. So I think Rock Davis went with him. Uh, a couple other guys, um, shoot, I, I hate missing guys' names. Um, so, uh, snowman takes over and then we have a meeting, uh, and it's okay. Now we're getting planning and earnest and he points at me, he's telling everybody what they're doing and he says, you're out. And I, I'm like, wait a minute, what do you mean? I'm out. And he goes, you're out. Uh, group wants you to go to Pope. And I'm like, you know, cursing inside to myself and, and uh, really disappointed, uh, pissed off, you know, whatever. Yeah. And uh, so they put, uh, I think it was John Schmidt put in Deanna's place. And, and uh, so he's now the, the, uh, the lead, uh, the primary ALO. And uh, so the next event was me going down to um, uh, Pope, never met. Uh, I met General, oh, sorry, General Longoria right after 9-11. He, he did his World War One tour. So he yeah, went yeah. Uh, everywhere and he visited all the units and he stood in front of us and he gave a very motivational speech like, you're going to go, you know, I, 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 he said, I don't know when anybody's going where, but uh, there's no doubt the nation will need you kind of thing. And then he, then I went up to him and, you know, as he's walking out the door and I introduced myself 
And I think uh, Shaq had told him about me and my background. What he was trying to build was the 93rd A gal. Okay. And his vision for it is different than it manifested into today. Sure. But it, it had a lot to do with my knowledge of the CRG. And so taking over an airfield and setting it up and stuff. Okay. So it turns out that's what he wanted me down there for work on that stuff. So I get down there, I go. So it's it a good thing because it was like, he, he saw your talents, but you were like, I'm not, that's my old life, man. I don't want to do that stuff now. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, and I'm still like, I, I'm just boiling and yeah. I, I can't tell you how, how bad it felt, you know, like yeah. it's like your girlfriend dumped you, <laughs> your dog died you know, all of that wrapped up at the same time. So I, as soon as I walked through the door, uh, uh, Colonel Maresca is the deputy and he's sitting there and I said, I got to talk to Colonel Longoria ASAP. And he goes, okay, well come back tomorrow. I'm in civilian clothes, just got in. Um, oh, you've been to brag a bunch, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'm staying at that flea bag that's still running hotel right outside right. so i see him the next morning and i can't i have no idea what he said because all i'm thinking about what is what am i gonna say right and yeah. i said hey sir i i didn't join the military to make slides and i said i understand what you want to do i can do that and fight at the same time and he said he goes don't worry you know don't worry you'll get in in, in it you know and i'm thinking oh here's a story i didn't tell you the reason that that felt like that was because when I was at Fairchild, so I'm the, I'm like the, you know, and again, not, not bragging. I'm just stating the fact I'm, I'll just say one of the best bombardiers in the unit. We won the Fairchild trophy. No, no relation to the name of the base, but sure. to the guy. Um, and, and that is the ultimate trophy you win in, in bombers in a bombing competition. Okay. So we won that. And, uh, so I thought I was somebody right. And, uh, so uh desert storm kicks kicks in right okay. we're out there me and my crew and other crews we're on diego garcia which is the biggest bomb dump in the pacific loaded right, right. you know we could be loaded for bear in five minutes and st start flying caps over kuwait you know whatever yep. you know so we're the dod or the air force or somebody decided that uh the H's will be nukes and the G's will be conventional. So H guys had to go recall to, into the G's to go drop bombs. You know, we drop Jeez. conventional bombs all the time. So yeah. anyway, uh, so we come back. Uh, so instead of staying there, which that's where everybody deployed to Fairford, England and, and Diego Garcia, mm -hmm. um, I go back to Fairchild and I go to the squadron commander um, rest his soul. He's since passed away. But I said, Hey, um, I got to get in this, you know, again, I didn't join the air force to, uh, just fly in circles all the time. I, you know, and, right. and I feel like I burned it. And he said, um, I'll tell you what, if you go, uh, into scheduling, which I just finished a tour of scheduling, mm -hmm. he says, uh, you'll be on the first plane over there. So, and this is before does a storm happen. So I take the job, I'm doing the job and, uh, <laughs> here it happens. You know, it's like, Whoa, okay. Now I'm, I'm like sitting on cloud nine. Cause I go cash in time. So I go to him and he goes, well, that's just a lie. I told you to take the job. He told you that like straight yes. up. Yes. <laughs> what a jerk. Yeah. So I'm dead. What a jerk. Yeah. So oh my God. because we were in Diego Garcia in the window, you know, like I, and I, I, ref, I, I would never accept any kind of like a ribbon or, you know, like I was over there. I was just so mad that, yeah, yeah. you know, so I was like, mm. oh man. Anyway, so when this, so you still have that stuck in your head, now 9-11 comes and now you're, again, it's happened. You're, you're like, <laughs> now I'm doing this stuff, same stuff again. I, I don't know oh. what kind of, uh. Um, I mean, um, I'm trying to think <laughs> like where I would have ended up if that's what I would have done in, um, after nine 11 was make yeah. slides. I don't, I don't yeah. know. I, I I'm going to, I was going to use a, um, I'm trying to be funny, but it's probably too dark <laughs> to go there, <laughs> but they would start using my, my middle name. If you know what I mean, you, oh, know, okay. you know, like, yeah. 
Lee Harvey Oswald. It would yeah, be, yeah, yeah. You were like Andrew Duncan. maybe going postal a little bit. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, I get down there. He goes, yeah, yeah. Don't worry, we'll, we'll get you in there. So, uh, but you, but you've heard that before too, because the yes. guy told you he's like, yeah, just go over to scheduling and we'll get you in there. So you, you, you probably are a little skeptical at least. I mean, I don't know. Oh, it's hard. I was hard. L.A. is a lot. He's a lot more of a stand-up guy than most. And he, but I didn't know his him. word is his gold. So, um, you could probably, I mean, in that regard, you probably were like, okay, he's he's gonna look out for me. But I didn't know him. Oh, okay. okay. You know, I do now, yeah. but I did not sure. then. You know, so so you're I, a little skeptical still. Skeptical, sure. Yeah. And then, uh, I mean, I saw him for like five minutes, and then he was going to, um, he had to go somewhere else. And then the rest of us uh, were deploying uh, from the group. So now I'm I'm part of the group package, and we're gonna go to Robbins. Then we're gonna catch Miller to um, Camp Doha. Okay. And uh, so this is weird because I'm like, okay, 9/11, we're going to war, you know, and it's you know like November or whatever. So we're we go down to Robbins, and uh, it's the weirdest thing because this is not how I thought I'd go to war the first time. So the, this first time I'm sitting on the plane, we got our weapons. This is a commercial airliner. We got like a snack in front of us, <laughs> little <laughs> bottles of whiskey, M4 what? stuff underneath <laughs> the, 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 <laughs> your feet and your, you know, a bag in a C or I think it was in, no, we had a bag stored underneath anyway. And we're taking off and I hear in the headphones, it's like, um, I don't know, clearance, clear water revival plan or something like that. And I go, man, this is not what I thought what going to war would be like the first time. Right. Now it changes sure. later, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we get over there and we set up ops and it's uh, like the 18th day SOG is um, the, what we call now the Jace for mm -hmm. third army. Uh, so I'm doing that stuff for like three days and it's miserable, you know, it's yeah. meh, whatever, you know, and then, so what happened was uh, the date is December 5th, and that's the day that a B-52 uh, fratted uh, um, an ODA, killed some Afghans, I think killed a couple of uh, Green Berets. So General Longoria sent the B-52 guy to uh, Camp Rhino with the Marines, okay. so Task Force 58. Yeah. So, uh, then I thought, okay, what, what's that? <laughs> yeah. But, uh, I had all my crap and, you know, we were still carrying around gas masks and, yeah. and all that stuff. And so I got two big a bags, the rucksack, and I have no weapon because the, the, uh, senior enlisted, uh, leader at Fort drum or sorry, at the 20th said uh officers don't get long guns so um okay so now i'm wow. going someplace by myself <laughs> to, to no uh, pistol or anything did you have a sidearm at all I had a side arm, just... sure okay yeah, good good yeah yeah but uh um, so yeah something so uh um, still yeah yeah so when it when it came time i got to go you know go so now i'm going to war by myself and it's just like just get there so Camp Rhino was in, um, try to remember the, the village or whatever, but it was the Marines with General Mattis was okay. the ball. He was the task force uh, commander and he had a um, Talsi out there uh, running the airlift support. <clears throat> so uh, um, we go to um, Ali Al Salim is where I was catching a flight. So I had some, one of the guys that said, help me figure out how to get there. So um, we had this plan, going to drive to Ali Al Salim. Then I was going to catch a hop to Sieb. And then from Sieb, get in with a soft bird, an MC-130, into uh, Camp Rhino. They were doing lift in there uh, on a nightly basis for ammo supplies and stuff. Okay. So we stop at uh, Ali Al Salim and um, we go to the... Uh, Security Forces Detachment and said, hey, 
can I borrow a rifle? (laughs) (laughs) So it was like a negotiation kind of thing. And and so luckily they had uh, gal fives. And and, uh, so I I got one and I I started looking at it, you know, and it's like this rattly piece of, you know, it it had to be it's like the day one of manufacturing gal five. That was the one that came off the assembly line. So that's my weapon, and this will come back to bite me later. Oh no! Um, so uh, I drive to Ali Al Salim. One, one quick funny story is so that Airman is like Airman Basic driver, yeah. and then one of the NCOs came with me. I think maybe two of them. And they were just going to drop me off. So we're driving, and uh, um, the kid's nervous, you know, and he's we're driving through. Uh, there's stuff all over the place and uh, i think there was like oh there was a dead camel on the side of the road and this dog is just gnawing on it oh, <laughs> and, and and the kids like it's it's a it's a freak show you know yeah, it's yeah. really you know yeah. but he said something funny like um tearing the ass out of that camel. I mean, it was something funny and it made us laugh and i think it really made his day that he 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 made the older dudes the uh, some, he guys. said something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So he, he really lightened up after that point. <laughs> so he dropped me off. I get a schedule. I get on a, um, MC 130, and it was a waiting game. Uh, and I was going in with um, French, British, Australian, and uh, Turkish special forces. Okay. So there was about 10 of us on there. Um, they had a couple vehicles loaded up, and everybody had their their stuff Mm -hmm. so we take off we get up airborne and just as we go into uh, the box they put up you know they turn off the lights you know they go uh clandestine mode or whatever Mm -hmm. so we're getting close and we start taking sams and uh they were popping off air bursting around the aircraft yeah and the pilot was was jinking and jiving and and i got that part yeah, yeah. you know i i knew what he was doing and uh so everybody strapped in and um you could just hear him popping uh around the aircraft turns out the entire base was uh under assault no way. it was getting rocketed and mortared and then uh we were taking the uh the sams and, and at the fourth one uh, it really like, it just was like this lightning flash. And I thought, okay, this is it. Uh, yeah. And, you know, I, I figured that I wasn't scared, but what I, I was kind of sad. Cause I, I like, you like were I almost said, there. You almost made it. Yeah. <laughs> almost there. Oh. And you know, my, my poor wife, yeah. you know, my family is going to be so sad cause I'm dead, you yeah, know, my yeah. dog, you know, <laughs> right, all right. that kind of stuff. <laughs> and then, uh, at the fourth one, he, he pitched out client started climbing and he had enough yeah. so we went back and i just said you know to myself i go well that i'm still under orders so i got in line to get on the next one and um hop on the next one the next one was uh australian uh soft unit medics and they had their vehicles and stuff uh it was just a couple guys hardest person to understand what the heck he was saying. <laughs> you know, I chatted with this guy. I honestly couldn't tell you one word he said, you know, like a British guy. Yeah, I get it. I can kind of understand yeah, yeah. Uh, any kind of foreigner that speak in English. I can understand, sure. but an Australian speaking English, I, I, I just I'm get sorry. It. I, could, I didn't get it. <laughs> so we, uh, we, we went back and this time, um, made it in and, um, uh, this is also a recurring theme by myself carrying all my crap and it's an, a dirt strip so that the that powdery yeah. dusty sand is you know so thick and i'm wading through it and yeah. i'm like mm, you know and just kind of gritting my teeth and like i got no direction i got no poc i got nothing yeah. you know so i'm just showing up here so i walk through this wooden uh shacky door that looks like that's this is probably it's a it's an old mud hut Mm -hmm. but it's you know it's looks like it's got antennas sticking out the top so i figured it's got to be the headquarters so i go in and i and i turn around and there's general mattis there standing there you know kind of the man the man and he's reading the riot act to his aide or something just like you know so i figure well 
I found the guy. <laughs> yeah. So I started walking up to him and I'm like, sir, I'm, and he goes, who the F are you? And what the F are you doing on my airfield? <laughs> but not in a nice way. Right, right, right. He, you know, and uh, he's, he is just beat red steaming. And I, I said, sir, I'm major Donnelly. And I, I'm, he said, who, who sent you here? And I told him, he goes, who the F is that? And uh, <laughs> I said, well, he's the 18th days. I grab your shit. And he goes uh, to his aide. He, he says, grab the major's bag. And he, no kidding, walked me to the end of the airfield, uh, carrying all my, and he's carrying my bags. Like Madison. I said, I Madison's. And I said, <laughs> I can carry my own stuff. And, you know, knowing all the, t the whole time, I don't care what he's, I'm not going anywhere. Right, right, right. You know, so he goes, uh, you have a weapon. And I said, you know, I feel like, man, can you any be any more condescending? No doubt, no doubt. <laughs> you know, so I'm, I'm like getting kind of pissed. And I said, yes, sir. And he says, do you know how to use it? Oh. And I go, yes, sir. <laughs> and so it's this rattly old Cal 5. And he goes, well, you need to lock and load because the enemy is right outside the berm. I go, yes, sir. So I cannot get the magazine to see <laughs> no matter what I do. Uh. So I'm sitting there, I'm walking down a thing, kind of holding the magazine into the, yeah. <laughs> the, the weapon. Yeah. And I, I'm so like, I'm so pissed now because, you know, like, I don't want to have him be right. Yeah, yeah, for like, sure. Like, like the magazine falls in the dust yeah. or something like He's that. He's like, this Air this Air Force major's coming into my A. He's like a hardcore Marine, you know, just like, oh, yeah, yeah. You don't want to give him anything, any more ammunition than he's already got, for sure. No. <laughs> so we get to the end of the field, and there, there's a Talsi. So airmen, you know, CCT guys. And uh, so he said, hey, get the major on the next plane out of here. Um put all this stuff over here, you know, whatever. So they left and, uh, I turned to the captain and I said, I'm not going anywhere. Uh, you know, if you want to give me a, uh, um, just point me in the right direction. Who do I go to talk to, you yeah. know, to, uh, do my job. I'm supposed to be here to help the Marines, not, not be a burden, but that's one thing I forgot to tell you is, uh, he said at the time, uh, when I said who I was, he goes, I don't, this is General Mattis in, in the talk. He goes, I don't need another shit or an eater. <laughs> <laughs> you know, out of here. It's like, what do you do? For, what go, can you do for me? Yeah. I don't need another. Yeah. Just taking up space. Yeah. So I, I said, sir, I think I can do a little more than that. that dude, and uh, he's amazing, man. And yeah. And then I told him, well, so I see him later in life. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll tell, oh, yeah, tell yeah. you that in a bit, but he, uh, so I said, I'm an ALO. And he goes, I got those. And I go, well, you got anybody who's an expert in B-52s? And uh, he said, I would, you know, he said, that's when he just said, let's go. Yeah, yeah. And he took me down there. So I come back, uh, I E and E my way back to uh, <laughs> the, the main area. And there's, um, oh, what's the guy's name? Uh, this is uh, one of uh, General Longoria's, I, I would call him friends, nemesis okay. or nemesis. Sure, sure. He, uh, uh, grew up with him in, in the CCT business oh, okay. and they were always in competition. So he's out there, uh, this night and he's, he's the man. Yeah. So he's the air. Um, I forget what the, basically he's like the soft air guy, Okay, the commander, he's a Colonel. Yeah. And, uh, so I go down there, I plead my case. And as soon as I say, uh, General Longoria, he goes, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> and then he, he goes, let, let me see what I can do. I guarantee he went back there, chewed a stick of bubble gum, came back in, didn't talk to anybody. Sure, he sure, says, yeah. sorry, I can't help you. So he goes, y you're out. I'm going to get you on the plane the next morning. So then they swap out. That night he leaves and uh, Com Commodore Harwood, uh, he's running the seals. He comes in. So I link up, um, Mike, uh, Blazinski mm -hmm. and, um, God, I hate missing this guy's name too. Cause he, he really helped me out, but they both were there as tack peas with the soft unit. So I kind of had a little bit of an in, um, I thought, yeah, yeah. so, uh, the, uh, ODB commander is there and he says, Hey, uh, um, we're going to do a SR mission. 
and uh, I, I don't have any uh, JTAC. Are you JTAC qualified? And I said, yes. Nice. And uh, so uh, I go next morning, I go with uh, the Commodore and uh, he's, he's, uh, he's an interesting guy. Yeah. He, he's an interesting guy. He's got this big scar on the side of his face. He got, and, and I asked him and he, you, you know, we're sitting there, he's eating an orange doing pull-ups of course and i'm sitting there i just got finished shaving in the mirror of the of the humvee and i this is my chance to plead the case so i said hey sir uh this is me uh you know i understand you're the the guy and i said um i'm gonna join up with the oda and help you guys out i'm gonna go on an sr mission and i'll be your jtac and if you clear with the general and he goes i don't care that's fine. Right. And he didn't say that's fine. He just said, I don't care. <laughs> so we're chatting. And I said, uh, you know, like, Hey, where'd you get the scar? Yeah. <laughs> you know, on your face. <laughs> He's like, that's not, it's not really like what dudes do. Like you don't ask people like where they got your scar. And I go, Oh, okay. What was it embarrassing? Like, yeah, right. You got it yeah. in grade school or something. And he goes, no, he got it in the knife fight. And it's like, oh, okay, well, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. We went, uh, and that point I met the ODA and then we were, we were, uh, next thing we were going to do was go out on the mission and, and, um, the two JTACs were going to stay there and as they were supposed to mm -hmm. with the, with the unit there with the Marines. And I did get a chance to kind of brief the Marines on, uh, using JDAMs from B-52s and stuff like that. It was like one time I, I talked to one of the Marines and, and he kind of got it. He was an ALO. So he appreciated it. Um, and then uh, we pushed out the next day to do the um, SR mission. And, and the, the mission was focused on the Marine detachment or the task force was going to go take Kandahar. Okay. So uh, we were going to do the, the, uh, the reconnaissance around uh, the Western flank and joined back up to participate in the assault the next day. Okay. Um, so, um, I'm in one, it was two vehicles. We're pulling a trailer. Um, it, it, it's kind of an interesting story, but it's kind of a long story. Uh, but again, this is, you know, 15 minutes ago, I didn't know what ODA stood for, Right, right. <laughs> you know, and now I'm on one and the guys were great. You know, they, they didn't know anything, they didn't care. They didn't ask me, you know, they just knew I had firepower and a, and a radio, sure. you know, so that's what mattered. And as we were going, you know, I was checking in with, uh, Shaq, uh, not per se, but with, uh, solar was their call sign mm -hmm. up in Uzbekistan and checking for air, you know, what was available. And, um, so there was a couple opportunities that we came across some Taliban and, you know, it was going to be, a, it would have been a clean kill, but uh, they did not want to um, stir anything up sure. or alert anybody as they were getting ready. You know, that wasn't their mission. For sure. Um, yeah. That's like the yeah. opposite of what an SR for, would be for, for sure. Yeah. You want to be in exactly. and out. Don't let anybody know you're there for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I know, yeah. but you, I could see how you would be like, man, yeah, I could just control some cast real quick and then we'll get back to this SR, you know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And that would happen a couple of times. And then uh, we linked up with the uh, with the uh, Marines once we finished. Again, we crossed a, a pass with a, uh, this was actually funny. I took a picture because uh, we were going over this overpass and right in the, in the wadi, I guess, it's all dried out. Uh, was a BMP and it was all Taliban, black flag, black turbans and stuff. And, you know, I was just like, Hey, how are you doing? <laughs> really? And I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, and they're just sitting there. They, they're not like, they don't know what's going on. Yeah. Cause I think it's like, this is really like the first time they're seeing us. Okay. Because, you know, like, they why were are they here? Like, what's, are they, yeah. yeah okay. What is this, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. That was a so weird, we was a weird thing in the beginning there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, and oh, sorry, the, the one of the most uh, memorable parts, which I almost forgot, <laughs> was uh, uh, we went to uh, the city was uh, the village was Lashkarga, mm -hmm. but uh, we stopped at this teeny little village before that. And we actually got ourselves into a, a little bit of a, a, a 
dangerous situation because you know how they got those little mud walls all all over the place mm -hmm. about two feet three feet high yep. we pull a humvee in there and there's no like you no way forward and it's really hard to back out yeah. and so it was a bad move sure so we're sitting there and there's all these guys like these old you know dudes with the beards and the ak standing around and and uh I thought, well, but we're, it's just us, you know, we're there. We're not, um, I think we had all that, that, the old crappy, um, flak vest. Okay. You know, we don't have body armor, uh, you, you know, and we're kind of driving around with our soft caps and stuff. And we're now with the people, which I thought this is what I thought would be like to go to war. And then we're supposed to be liberating these people. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I went, I, the, the meanest, baddest guy with the, with the AK with the bayonet on it, I just went up to him and I, I stuck my hand out and his face lit up. He smiled, this big smile with all these missing teeth all and right, stuff. Right. <laughs> and it was like, it was really cool moment. And all these kids come running up then and we're giving them charms, you yeah, know, yeah. everybody had charms. Yeah. So they, they really uh, kind of started to get <laughs> to be a little bit of a nuisance. <laughs> and so the, the ODA captain uh you know he's the boss i'm a major but i'm you know he's the boss sure, sure. so he's like hey major stop um doing the goodwill stuff and and uh <laughs> you know get us some coordinates or something <laughs> yeah. and uh so we press on and we link up with the the marines and and uh so this guy uh this captain with the marines was an alo the night before so while we were out there i think we kind of heard all this going on but the, there was a road, Highway 1, I think, was um, where we were going to marshal off of and then attack into the city and then take the airport. And uh, there was this big convoy of Taliban. So we're thinking maybe that was the, the guys that we passed might have been the scouts or something. Mm -hmm. So anyway, this captain started laying waste uh, that night to all of the stuff that was going up and down the road. So he's... He's all pumped up and he's chatting it up with everybody as we're getting ready to roll. And I was about to tell you, we blew our transmission on the second vehicle. Oh no. So we're having to tow it. And it's just, this is not the way that you think you would go no. <laughs> into an assault, you know? <laughs> so they ended up tying our Humvee, which it wasn't running to a lab. So we got the back of the lab in our faces and it's you, you could the the driver uh the sergeant couldn't hold it because it was just too much uh of pulling the vehicle oh. so the wheels turned sideways almost broke his arm and it just started pouring like dirt into our vehicle like I, i'm i don't know trying to stay alive breathing and <laughs> trying to stick my head out the thing this is what a triumphant charge into kandahar you know but anyway, Gosh. that guy would come back later, that captain. Uh, so he's all, you know, pumped up and stuff. And I tell him who I am just so we're linked on the air control business stuff. So um, Texas 17 was the call sign. Uh, not exactly sure which ODA or, but it was, or I think it was CCT. And, and it might have been um, one of our guys. Okay. Um, that did all the damage that prevented us. We didn't even have to fire a shot yeah. by the time we got to the car. It was, it was not, they were knocked out everything. Uh, they had ZSU 23 fours and all that stuff was taken out. And it was all that ODA uh, doing all the good work before the Marines even got there. Okay. So we roll in and, and now I'm, I'm with this ODA and I end up, uh, doing different missions with them for about two weeks. And, uh, it was great. Yeah. You know, they were great. Um, and then, uh, the same Marine that did the, uh, uh, the action the night before I'm getting ready to go. And I hear all this commotion up in the control tower. Um, and we're sleeping below it and he's getting ready to call in a strike on a, um, ZSU uh, 23, four. And, uh, I said, um, wait a minute, you know, what, what are you doing? And he goes, I don't have to tell you anything. Right. I go, well, you don't have to, but, uh, have you called solar? And he said, who's that? 
I go, well, that's Task Force Dagger. They run all the ODAs around here. You might want to check to make sure that's not one of theirs. And uh, because they were capturing stuff, you right. know, why let the enemy have something, you know? Sure. So uh, he goes, I don't have their number or whatever. And I go, well, wait a minute. I'll pump, pump it in here. I'll put the frequency in. Sure enough, it was in one of our ODAs and uh, our JTAC was with them. Whoa. And I confirmed, I said, okay, knock it off, uh, um, abort the mission. These are our guys. And oh, uh, the guy that was like, so horrible. If you wouldn't have been there. And he went from like, Mr. Uh, I'm, I'm the king of the world from the actions of the night before to, he came up to me later and real like, he was like, man, thanks, man. You just kept me from, you know, killing our own guys. And I go, I know that's what we do.